Mike, uh, what was kind of the biggest thing that you think you and your guys kind of achieved on the bye week? I thought we got a, a lot of really good work with the young guys. I thought that uh, <coughs> we got uh, some good work on the fundamentals, and then I thought that uh, I'd like to think we uh, were able to rest some of our guys a little. Um, you know, we really uh, don't have that luxury because we're kind of we're kind of uh, we're not a real deep team. We're kind of one layer deep, and you know, we have to keep our skill set sharp and so the balance between keeping your skills sharp and uh and also resting up i mean is kind of a tricky one um just to follow up to that playing against alabama obviously it's always tough but how much does playing them coming off the circumstances that they are coming off the loss to unranked opponent satan's first i think it's 15 years how much does that change things you think well i don't you know the the rankings are all out of whack anybody that thinks that there's uh Anybody that thinks there's like 30 teams better than Texas A&M's out of their mind, but um, uh, the uh, huh. and someday when I'm in your position, I'll uh, go right down the list and tell you which ones. But um, the uh, uh, I think that um, you know, I mean, uh, you had two good teams play, and uh, and the home team won. You know, and it's. You know, John Wooden used to say, uh, "Never be surprised when the home team wins." And then, uh, but you know, that's a heck of an atmosphere there. You know, I, you know, I, I love playing at Kyle Field, and um, and I think that uh, you know, it's a heck of a place to play. Two really good teams played, and uh, and Texas A&M won. So, Eric, Mike Hanson, Fox Statistically, it looks like Will has been protecting the ball well. When you throw it as much as you do in your offense, are, are interceptions like an occupational hazard, or, or what would you consider to be an, an acceptable number? Uh, I don't think any are acceptable. Uh, zero is an acceptable number. Um, and then I think that, uh, oh, wow, look, we got prowlers. Uh, zero is an acceptable number. And um, uh, you know, you try to guard against them at all costs. You know, it's 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 kind of like, uh, you know, it's really the same as, uh, uh, you know, when a ball carrier's got it. I mean, uh, how many fumbles is an acceptable number? I mean, they happen from time to time, but there's uh, there's no acceptable number. Uh, you mentioned after the LSU game, you talked about LSU's level of recruiting. Alabama's obviously recruiting at a high level. When you play teams like this. Is it more important to? It's more important for players to play above themselves, adrenaline, that sort of thing, or, or to just be consistent <clears throat> in the system. I think you got to be disciplined enough to, to, you know, your best is always enough. You got to be disciplined enough to uh, do your best, focus in, focus in, don't get discouraged, and um, uh, and and don't get. Uh, too hyped up if something good happens for you. I mean, the, the, it's the discipline to to constantly bring your best effort and not uh, not get distracted by the you know the the highs and the lows. You know, and I think um, it takes quite a discipline to do that. And but I think that's the key. You know, nobody can play above themselves because uh, you know well that's above themselves, so that's not very possible. You know. Mike, how closely will you, will you look at the, the tape from that Texas A&M Alabama game, considering you guys just you guys just faced the Aggies in, in one? Uh, I couldn't hear the last part. Something about the Alabama. How close will we look at the A&M tape? Close. Yeah, just how closely will we look at that at A&M versus Alabama tape, considering you guys just you guys just faced the Aggies? In yeah, the yeah. Well, we definitely we've looked at it a bunch, and it's uh, um, <clears throat> you know, it's a. Uh, it's a pretty good representation of them. One thing with Alabama is, uh, uh, you know, watching uh, a team that plays them to the wire. You know, I mean, not everybody does, and so that's beneficial from that tape. With Will, this would mark, I think, a, a full season's worth of starts for him. I, I know he's still a young guy, but what do you feel he's done the most this season to kind of make that step and, and at times look like a pretty experienced player? 
Uh, it just improved overall and operates quicker. He's operating quicker now than he has. <clears throat> Coach, it's been pretty clear that your offensive line has, has played good football the last two games, LSU and A&M. I uh, think it's just a matter of those guys growing comfortable playing together, chemistry, or what have you seen? <clears throat> well, I think they've logged uh, – they still haven't logged very many reps together, but they've logged more than when they started for sure. Uh, I think logging reps together and uh, – <clears throat> just steady work and practice, and they are, uh, you know, they they are a group that works and wants to improve, and uh, so they're motivated, and I think that's helped too. <clears throat> Having Scott Lashley come back for this year, how much has that helped the offensive line just to have a veteran guy like that coming back? Well, he's not veteran as far as having played a lot, but he's, you know, he's just a talented guy. You know, I mean. Uh, that's the one thing I got to thinking about Scott. He, he really hadn't played that much, but he's a real talented guy. He's got really good feet and moves well for a guy his size. And plus, he's a massive guy, and he's a pretty smart guy, you know, and just needs to stay relaxed and, uh, and uh, focus on the job at hand, and then he's pretty good. What sticks out to you the most about this uh, Alabama team? Based on watching the uh, well, I mean, the, it's kind of like all all the team, you know. He's good. I mean, obviously he's good. He's the next good one. And then he, um, you know, they just have a lot of players that are, uh, they play hard, play aggressive, and, uh, you know, are just good quality players. Uh, the, the wide receivers room is something that we've talked about. What are your thoughts on their progression and where they stand right now? Ours or theirs? Uh, ours. Oh, our, uh, well, our receivers. Uh, well, total work in progress. You know, I think we're improving, though. I think, uh, you know, we're improving. We'd like to improve faster. Um, but I think we're getting better. I mean, we're, uh, we're more tightly synchronized than we have been. Um, and uh, you know, and we're so, you know we've developed a, uh, some depth to the inside receivers. We got to try to find some depth to the outside receivers, and uh, uh, you know we just got we just got to keep getting better there, really. You mentioned earlier maybe with some players not wanting them to get you know too too high in some moments and. You know, if something goes well with a team like Alabama, when you know you know they're, they're going to make plays and deliver big blows, how do you kind of work on the flip side of making sure they they don't get too down if, if something happens, you know, against them? Now you just got to try to stay even keel, and that's you know you and uh, you always fight that with a young group. But I have seen some positive things. I thought we did that uh, through the A and M game, so that was a pretty good practice with regard to that. Also, that in a, in a tough environment where it's tough to communicate. Will took the lion's share of the snaps last season at Tuscaloosa. How, how important do you think that experience is, just playing the team rather than the, the helmet sticker? Um, good question. I don't know for sure. I think, uh, you know, you don't – the biggest thing, you don't want to squander plays because of the helmet sticker, you know. And sometimes you see teams do that and, uh, you know, it, team like Alabama is good enough that you can't afford to do that under any circumstances. So, uh, you know, you want to make sure you don't uh, squander plays, uh, you know, reconciling that you're playing a, a talented opponent. You just want to, you know, kind of worry about yourself and go do the best that you can and focus on that and, and consistently do that even, you know, as the game has ups and downs. But you, right over here, you kind of talked about it. You just, you know, beat a ranked team in Texas A&M, have done that since you've been here. What what do you tell your guys as far as not really paying attention to the number beside a, a team just to go out there and play your game? 
You know, we've done a decent job of that recently. I think just go out and, 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 and play. Just so I guess what I said before, which it's uh, boring and it's not fun for you guys to write about, so in most cases you probably won't. Um, but, uh, you know, if you can just go there and be the best self, your, your best self that you can, and just lock into your job and do it the best you can and, and, and don't get distracted by you know what might happen you know um you know because yeah and everybody's seen it and you'll all you gotta do is you know sometime on saturday just turn on the game and you know there's a you know some player comes frantically to the sideline you know okay they did this they did you know like uh, uh okay you know they did this and then <clears throat> you know the cheerleader ran around the the stadium three times and then a shetland pony came out and ate a hot dog on the 50 yard line so then now what do i do you know i mean uh so uh you know i mean you got to eliminate all the clutter and just focus on what counts and then the other thing is is you got to trust the guy next to you to do the same thing. And if you can do that together, um, that'll put your best foot forward. And that'll put you in the best position to uh, execute a play. And you got to do it over and over. So, Coach, most people weren't expecting Alabama to drop that ball game. I mean, how do you combat maybe your guys relaxing a little bit, saying, oh, yeah, well, this isn't the same Alabama team it has been? Well, if we relax against the University of Alabama, then we are the stupidest team uh, in college football. You know, I mean, we if we if we relax under those circumstances, we may have uh, some uh, you know some very good qualities. You know, and we may have uh, some very uh, you know positive things and stuff like that. But you have to really be a dumb team to. You know, relax if you're playing Alabama or anybody like. Really, <laughs> our schedule. If you relax to playing our schedule, period. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't, I can't think of anybody you can relax on. At least uh, not around here or coming up. You know, so. Uh, Mike, everyone, uh, obviously, everyone knows the legacy Saban has, Alabama, and, and all that good stuff. But what does he do? from a coaching perspective that really kind of separates himself, having played against him last year, would you notice that really separates himself and makes him such a tough coach to coach against? Well, I've known him for, you know, quite a while. Um, you know what I'll, I've always thought he does best? I thought he evaluates. I, thought, I think he evaluates really well, um, you know, because uh, he's in a position where he can get pretty much anybody, but I think he evaluates as far as which ones to take very well. Uh, and then the other thing is, is uh, you know, he's not afraid to, you know, tell somebody no or push somebody hard, you know, like, uh, oh, occasionally somebody will get some five-star parade All-American and then he's afraid to coach him, you know. Coach Saban's not afraid to coach that guy and, and push that guy. And so I've always thought his, uh, the strongest things he did was uh, evaluate and, uh, and push guys. You mentioned playing as the best version of yourself. How, how difficult can that be achieved? How, how difficult can that be to achieve as a young team? And, and how do you, I mean, what do you got to tell your guys to make sure that they, they strive to get there? I just think they got to clear their mind and focus on it. I mean, obviously, everybody has trouble with it, and we can have uh, debates on the effectiveness of it, but we, we, we have everything from everything from safe rooms to service dogs. And so, I mean, everybody's obviously struggling with it and life coaches and all the rest. So, um, but in the meantime, we're gonna try to remove some of the clutter and go ahead and have the position coaches as life coaches and try to clear their mind and just get them to focus on what counts, you know. When you're in a ball game like this, I mean, how difficult is it to not do something out of character, whether it be fake a punt or go for it on fourth down under long circumstances? I mean, you know, is that kind of a prerequisite for beating Alabama, or how do you kind of stay avoiding those emotional decisions? Oh, I think it, I think it's tricky. I think there's a, a temptation, and you've got to resist this, like by players and, and coaches both. Um, there, you know, sometimes there's a temptation to try to do too much, and you got to. 
you know, focus on your job, have the discipline to focus on your job and, and don't try to do too much, you know, because uh, if you try to do too much, then it just evolves into, into street ball. You're just like calling random plays and the guy's just uh, trying to anticipate, you know, where the balls go and just run in a variety of directions on both sides of the ball. And, and everybody's just guessing, you know, it's, so it's just like when you were, you know, a kid out in the cul-de-sac or the backyard or in the vacant lot, you know, and so you try to have it a little more precise and controlled than that. All right, thank you. All right, thank you.